Can I ask you to uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then just some sort of headlines about, uh, about your business in the first instance? Yes, thank you, Mark. So, um, I'm Anthony Baker, CEO and founder of, of Satellite View. So, my background, 25 years in space, uh, mainly in, in, in communications, um, helped build a, a number of uh, small companies, startups, um, that have, three of them have scaled to a billion dollars. My last role, I was a CEO in Qatar of a, a startup company, um, built it up to 88 people and two pretty expensive satellites, and uh, it was transferred to the Sovereign Wealth Company for uh, a fund for over a billion dollars. So, have considerable uh, experience in building and exiting uh, companies, especially in the space sector. So, Satellite View is going to launch uh, some unique Earth observation satellites. Uh, that have an infrared camera, so we're looking at thermal em emissions, and we can detect those from any structure on the Earth, so any building. So, in essence, we can detect immediately where in the world we're wasting energy. So, who cares about that? So everyone who's declaring net zero or has an ESG target, they have, they have a fundamental problem. They don't know what their carbon emissions are today. They don't know where to spend their first funds to make things better. And if they have upgraded a building or a process, did it work? Um, so this really helps um, weeding out people who are claiming green, green and those who are doing greenwashing. And particularly in the sort of the, uh, in the scope three, so uh, those emissions done in supply chain. So is that factory in China quite as good as they, they, they want to be? Um, if there's a, a green fund, uh, is is what they're investing in going to, re going to have a, a right re a, the correct return <laughs> in order to, uh, to be able to pay off the loan. Um, so these aspects is where we see the, the mega growth for our company. Thank you. Dominic, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your business? Absolutely. So yeah, I'm Dom. I'm the CEO of Planet Watches. Um, before Planet Watches, I was the founder and CEO of a SaaS-based MarTech business, so a very, very different sector. Um, I did that for 10 years, founded the business in 2010, uh, opened offices in Singapore, in the UK, uh, in Paris, and over in the US as well. I lived out in the States for four years as part of that growth journey. And it was a terrific journey. It was my first time in that kind of founder CEO position. And we had a blast. We really did. We got up to $20 million in annual recurring revenue, 175 heads, 500 plus customers. I learned so much. Uh, very fortunate to go through an exit of sorts via private equity, which allowed some chips off the table, but also allowed me the chance to reflect. That reflection was I was ready to do something new. But it was also that in that 10 year spell, Half the decisions I'd made, I'd make again. The other half, I absolutely wouldn't, if I'm perfectly honest. And I was looking for somewhere to apply those burnt fingers. There's, there's value in that. And it was around that time I was introduced to Roy Shilo, who is the CTO and co-founder of Planet Watches. Roy's background himself was from the Israeli military. And he had been using a number of different remote sensing technologies, but primarily something called Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR for short. Um, in simplistic terms, this is microwaves being bounced off the Earth's surface, but because it's microwaves, it's not like a photograph of the Earth, it's not an optical image. You can penetrate cloud cover, you can penetrate darkness, which allows you to persistently monitor the Earth's surface. So a number of things jumped out based on those conversations. Firstly, the potential scale for this technology in the commercial worlds and the number of verticals was really evident. With that, the potential to deliver a really meaningful exit was obviously evident. The potential to do some good, which is really helpful when you want to sleep well at night, obviously. Uh, but also, as someone who is more comfortable climbing the mountain than standing on top of it, it was quite frankly the hardest thing that I could do next. And the moment I realized that, I was completely sold on the idea. So if we fast forward to where we are now, um, we have focused on developing a number of solutions and suite of services we feel are very relevant to the markets. I'll touch on that briefly. But we're acutely aware that we are going to be successful. And in order to be successful, we have to be famous for something. And you need to be careful what that something is. It needs to have deep pockets. It needs to be defendable. It needs to be something that you can replicate as well. Uh, but also, we're aware that we straddle a number of different verticals ourselves, whether that's space tech, whether it's customers in insure tech, customers in ag tech. 
but also climate tech as well. And if you look at the suites of services we've now brought to the market, we focus specifically on crops, so the food production supply chain. So looking at early season use of cover crops, which absorb carbon from the atmosphere, which is great. Detecting tillage where soil gets turned and releases carbon in the atmosphere, less great. Uh, looking at actually what crops have been planted, where, how much, when, whether they've been impacted by excess moisture, not enough moisture, right through to significant climate events such as large wind events, hail events, um, and any other weather-related event that can impact on the production of, of those crops. So that's what we've been focusing on initially. I think I'm slipping into pitch mode, so I'm going to dial it back a touch and yeah, look forward to the conversation. Okay, so we've got um, two CEOs that uh, have both um, successfully built businesses previously. Both of these businesses are at A series, so it's still relatively early. So uh, in turn, if you could just tell us the big picture. What's going to happen if, um, if you're successful? What's the business going to look like? What sort of scale are you going to get to? Give us an understanding of what success looks like. So if you look at the, the, the markets that we're addressing, the ESG, if you, if, you know, Mark Carney's represents 130 trillion worth of, of uh, assets um, who are declaring ESG. Everyone's declaring net zero but no one's measuring anything. So there's, there's a huge, huge market there for uh, a truth. So we can measure in, in China and in supply chains, London, your headquarters, uh, San Francisco, uh, uh, you know, distribution, with the same measurement. You can't replicate that um, elsewhere. So although we're launching satellites, we're actually retiring the risk completely by um, outsourcing them to uh, Airbus. So a subsidiary of Airbus, Surrey Satellite, down in Guildford. Um, so our concentration is really on the analytics. We, we're going to turn ourselves into a, a data company that's going to address certain verticals where our data set is unique. Nobody else can do infrared measurements at scale and to convert those not from imagery but into monetary units that uh, the that the financial community care about so this is where we're growing um, we have basic uh, revenues coming in from people that already used satellite data so there's already a community of analysts using satellite data so we can look at wildfires and pollution and some emissions from uh, factories so if we're looking at a refinery we can see what they're cooking this week based on on the emissions we can look at oil flowing down pipes because oil comes out the ground at 40 to 50 degrees so we can see what's pumping so we we provide some value added to existing community but the real winner is in this climate challenge and making a, a difference and making things a, a datum point of truth for everybody to compare one index, one algorithm against another because we have from space, the whole globe, every single structure on earth, uh, a potential for a measurement. So, so how big is your constellation going to grow to and over what sort of time frame and now, ultimately, what, what sort of scale business are you going to be able to build? So, from an from a, from a, uh, infrastructure, so we've, we've ordered uh, one satellite. Uh, I'm supposed to be signing today for another satellite, so that's, that's in place. Uh, we only need eight satellites initially for the first constellation, and that will give us uh, revisits of uh, up to 20 times a day. So, we've used a more sophisticated satellite. It's bigger, it's heavier, because but the things you were mentioning about the uh, new space, launch is, is a lot cheaper. We've optimized for performance rather than mass. I have paid $50,000 for a kilo going into space, and now we're, we're only paying $5,000 with, uh, with SpaceX. So with eight satellites, we can get 20 revisits a day. So that's look, really looking at the pattern of life throughout the day and night, uh, which, which is a you know, a unique insight. You can't do that with a drone. You can't do that with a plane. Certainly not over the city of London, because we have tried. Um, but with this, we expect to, you know, to be, to address billion dollars 
So we, we can see that uh, from the contracts that have been awarded recently, that billion dollar contracts are possible over a period of time. And uh, there's no reason with the, with the unique data set we have, uh, the first to market and the addressable market that we can't be in that category too. Great, okay, thank you. So Tom, tell, tell me about the big vision. Yeah, I mean, our marketing materials say that we'll deliver months of manual data collection in minutes of automated analysis, but there's a hell of a lot more to it than that. If I start with just the US, we're talking about monitoring 220 million acres of crops. I mean, in anyone's language, that's a lot of crops. Monitoring, monitoring every 12 days throughout the entire season. We see the US markets itself as being, in revenue terms to ourselves, about $500 million but we don't want to stop there. Clearly the goal here is to deliver services on every single field globally. So we're talking about subfield level analysis for every field of crop on the planet without ever visiting the field. That's the big picture. And, and much like Anthony describing, obviously, it's about building the revenues through the customers that we're targeting. We've started with the world of crop insurance in the US, uh, which is ripe for change. We've been pulled into a number of different related sustainability and agricultural input use cases as well. And we're excited about the future in terms of what that can be. As you say, we're a Series A business, you know, we're gunning for $3 million plus dollars worth of revenue this year, which means we're probably pushing north of eight next and then in the high teens the year after. So it's about focusing on that growth. Having been in a hot seat, not too different, dissimilar to this in the past. It helps, you know, when you start throwing those numbers out there, it's not just finger to the wind. It's understanding the levers you need to pull, which VCs love to hear about, but also what the team needs to look like to get there. Um, I'm very fortunate, I have a very strong team in the business, um, some of which I've worked with in the past, some of which are experts in the sector, but no, I think we're well equipped to maximize the opportunity in front of us. Great, so so Anthony, so what, what faces are you, what, what challenges are you facing in order to achieve this big picture that you've painted and and how much additional funds are you going to require in order to be able to get there so we can scale and we can scale fairly quickly so it takes currently about 16 months to make one of our satellites we can get that down to, to 12 months so on the technology side uh, we, we can easily scale everything's virtualized now so we don't have any systems everything's virtualized in, in AWS uh, so the process can be very quick, we could be very responsive. The market, so there is a base market, people that want to buy the raw data, the large companies, governments, there's, there's a whole market of analytics companies that we're talking to, already plugged into uh, certain insights, and so they're interested in buying that data. We need to invest in certain verticals. Uh, we found one, for example, in, in solar, uh, there's a billion dollars worth of energy being lost because there's failed panels. They currently use drones once a year with infrared cameras. We can do this on a weekly basis and get those panels back in order to save money. But that's just an interim step. There's bigger markets that we can, we can address. We need investment for that. We need more satellites. So for the eight satellites, we're looking for um, around or about 50 million pounds. Uh, we've already arranged some, uh, uh, some debt financing. Uh, the UK Space Agency is interested in supporting us with this non-dilutive grant funding available. Um, so I think we're already well ahead. We are looking to raise uh, around uh, this autumn, and uh, that will get us the, the eight satellites, which will be our first generation. And then the customers are already coming back. Can you do it more often? Can you have a higher resolution? Can you look at different aspects of infrared? So we've got a development plan as well. So there's a huge demand for this data, and we're first to market. And we've got a defensible moat, not just on the technology, but also on the analytics as well. Because we're the first people to, to deal with this commercially. Uh, so just like the applications on your phone, you have a cheap camera on your phone, all the uh, all the algorithms make it look shiny. We're doing the same thing in infrared um, and at scale. So we're keeping ahead of everything and getting close to the end users uh, with, with investment and, and deploying the right team will help us capture those megabucks. Right, okay, well thank you. So, uh, so Dom, 
So what challenges have you got to face in order to, uh, to, to build, build the, big, the business? And uh, just help us understand what, what the additional equity requirement to, for your full build-out is likely to be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if I look at challenges, I, I think very much in commercial terms. Um, we're an analytics firm. We don't build satellites. We're not launching the satellites. We're utilizing that data. So our challenges are very much commercial. I think if you work in a startup or you're surrounded by startups, we run at 2,000 miles an hour every single day. I've talked about our customers being large ag companies and large insurance companies. It's no surprise they don't run at 2,000 miles an hour. So there is a challenge in managing our own, I guess, go-to-market strategy here. It's important that we find the right messaging and we hone that messaging to create that hair on fire moment, to make sure there is a very clear, direct need in the services that we can deliver. It's not enough to talk efficiency. You need to put dollars against it. Um, we looked at a large storm event which happened in August of 2020, which impacted 1.25 million acres of crop in Iowa and Illinois, 1.25 million acres. It took the industry four and a half months to get people out into those fields to understand what happened. We analyzed that in seven days. Seven days. The initial estimates that were put out by the USDA were nine times higher than the actual damage. It's just ridiculous. You need to work hard to get that go-to-market messaging really clear to demonstrate strong value propositions to then shorten those sales cycles. Um, I think you know adoption is the thing that I care most about. If you look at these large markets, it's not that we have to win 2,500 customers or even 500 customers. You probably need to win the right 10 customers in each of those markets and then the tide comes in and all the boats have to float. It, it's that simple in terms of understanding the market. So I focus on those challenges from a, I guess, a capital standpoint. Yeah, there is space tech, it is analysis. We may not build the satellites, but what we do is really, really hard. You know, SAR data in its rawest form is zeros and ones. It doesn't just turn into analysis itself. So there, there is a degree of capital needed here. It would be pretty hard to bootstrap something like this. Uh, we're out there raising a Series A currently. We're raising $15 million, which gives you an indication on kind of where we are. But I fully expect that when we come back to market in 24-ish months' time to kind of raise again, then we're probably looking to raise a $40 million kind of round, something in that region, uh, to fully exploit what we have in front of us as an opportunity. Great. Well, thank you for sharing those insights with us. Does anyone in the audience have any burning questions for, uh, for these two companies before we bring the next entrepreneur up? Sorry. Do you want to just wait for the uh, speaker? Hi, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Augustine. I have a question for Dominic. Um, do you actually launch your own satellites or do you buy the SAR data? So no, we don't launch any satellites. We use the data which is available. That is from any of the SAR data providers. It could be ISI that we heard about. It could be European Space Agency data. We use the most appropriate data depending on the use case that we're addressing. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? There's one at the back over there. Thank you. Um, hi, um, I just have a question for both of you. Um, because you, you were kind to um, walk us through your background, but just um, in a bit more detail, I was curious about um, both of you, basically your, your background and how um, your different experience outside of the space sector uh, translate into what you're doing now. Uh, I've always been a space geek, unfortunately, so. Uh, <laughs> But I think my experience around the world, I've worked in, in Hong Kong, Qatar, ne Netherlands, uh, in, in the US somewhat. So I think it's been really useful to see how scale-ups uh, um, develop in different countries. Um, I've always joined companies where the initial funding's been, been, been available. So I'd, I met uh, Mark through uh, uh, Space Camp and that was a real eye-opener for me. And, and, and Seraphin's led both of our rounds. So we got to know each other. Um, I got to know how to pitch better to, to VCs. So even though working up in scale-ups in, in, in the space has uh, been my bread and butter, this was completely different, starting from zero um, and learning this uh, new paradigm for me um, and from the best um, and uh, you know, 
Marx helped us bring in people like Lockheed Martin, uh, Moulton, etc. So uh, we, we've the, the connections, uh, the synergies that you get from from working with a, a specialist VC has been really really helpful. I think from my perspective. Um, I see a number of advantages from having a team which isn't purely from the space sector. Uh, I'm conscious there's a lot of people in the room from the space sector, so I'm about to offend half of them, but there, there is, I believe, a, a perception I have around within space tech businesses, you get a lot of leaders who are scientists and technologists. They are, quite frankly, the smartest people you will ever meet. That's not the insulting part. The insulting part is when it comes to go to market and they believe that in order to win customers you write a white paper as thick as my head and expect someone to read it. And I think that's genuinely something that's been difficult for the sector to get its head around in terms of building that commercial marketing strategy, which is where the fact that my previous experience was a MarTech business. It's all about go-to-market. It was about taking very complex solutions and distilling it to the point where you can write it on the side of a can and then go sell loads of cans. So, so that's been really advantageous, I think, from my perspective. Good, thank right. you. Okay, well, thank you very much both. Uh, if you could just uh, give a round of applause to uh, our two um, CEOs there.